Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back to the Uncle Sharma channel here, 25th of July, to update you guys on the latest internews. So it's the, it's the summer transfer market. We got all the preseason friendlies going on. We had a hey, another season preseason friendly today. We're into one eight nil um, against the um, actually I forget what the what the team is called Peligotese or something like that. Eight nil. So another nice result for Inzaghi's boys, but. Importantly, I've got a poll up in the YouTube comment section, so make sure you interact with that poll because it's a question that I want to talk about in this live stream, which is about Martin Satriano, Satrigol, the this new gunman that Inter have uh, in the in the Primavera, um, coming through the Primavera, who's been impressing in this preseason, and once again today, two goals from Satriano in today's preseason friendly. There's rumors that we're going to talk about about him going out on loan. And before we start get talking, let me see what you guys' opinions are on, on him. Do you want to keep him? You want to loan him out? Serie B, which are the, the hot rumors. But then there's also rumors about other clubs that are a little bit, you know, higher level. And then maybe, you know, is it is it just Inter fans hyping up a, a Primavera player and then getting getting stabbed in the heart once again, as, as many Primavera talents have done to us in the past? Is he just... Um, is it just hype? Is he that not that good? Let me know in the uh, in the poll. Make yeah, sure you interact. Funny. Let's have a look how the poll is doing until now. We've got 11 votes, and most of you are saying to keep him. We've got 45% saying to keep him as fourth choice. 9% of you saying loan him out to Serie B. 27% of you saying loan to a decent level club. And then there's an 18% of you saying he's not that good. Hmm. Interesting. I want to hear from that eighteen percent. Actually, um, we'll talk about the the other the other guys. I want to hear from the guys that are saying that he's not that good. Let me know. Let me know. I'm not. I'm not saying that this guy is amazing, but I want to hear what makes you guys say that that he's uh he's not that good. Oh, I mean, we got Dom here who's saying Satriano's better than Mbappe. So you know, you know, Mbappe misses penalties the World Cup zero. Uh, sorry, at the Euro zero zero goals overrated, right? Satriano, Satriano's much better, right? <laughs> and got big Harry in the house. Thanks for the live stream. No worries, bro. So highlights today's friendly. Di Marco looked good. Yeah, again with a few assists, and I really feel he could be a starter. Yeah, man. Well, um, I'll actually pull up. I'll pull up the um the highlights of that because Inter just posted those those highlights on their on their YouTube channel, so we can uh, we can uh, watch them together. Hopefully, I don't get copyrighted or anything for these so um fingers crossed i'm gonna try to skip through the goal so that i don't get like uh copyrighted but it should be all right all right <laughs> if i uh let me just uh, load it up but yeah we can go we can go through it now who else is in the house let me know who else is in the house cloud shine saying what's extremely important now is that he plays regularly he can't do it in so yeah i'm uh as i, as I talked about in my previous um live stream that's the opinion i hold with most of the primavera guys like you just gotta they just have to play you have to let them play adult football and that's when you find out their level like it always sounds nice to say you know it's nice to keep him there he can learn from lukaku he can learn from lautaro we said that with esposito how much does can you actually learn from in train like i'm sure there's you know some advice here and there that you know lukaku gives that which is nice and you know, there's there's obviously things when watching them in training that you can learn, but really and truly, you're gonna learn by doing by doing it yourself by learning on the pitch. You're not gonna learn as much as you are when you're when you're playing against adults, against the proper footballers, not against you know 18, 17, 18 year olds with frail bodies. Against when you play against guys that know what they're doing, they know they know the dark arts, they know how to muscle you out. You know, there's foully from behind. You know all those little things you have to learn. That's 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 real football. It's not just about your technical physical ability. You have to be you have to be smart and know what to do. And you can only do that by by playing football. And that's you know that's similar attitude I hold with Agume as well. You know he went out to Spezia, sounded good in theory that you know lower level team in Serie A could get some minutes, but in the end he didn't really get enough minutes for for him to get that learning to get that Serie A experience. So. That's all. So we're hoping with Satriano, they goes, uh, goes, goes. If he stays at Inter to get the right minutes, in my opinion, he has to. 
apparently, according to the reports, Inzaghi is willing or is 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 looking to test him out in this uh, in this preseason. Um, where is it? Yes, here it is. The report from Sempre Inter translated from Italian into coach. Inzaghi wants to evaluate Martin Satriano before considering to loan him out, which which is good. You know, he has to do that with everyone. You know, every single player in the squad. You never know. Even the likes of Salcedo, who you know, maybe he's not as highly rated, but you never know. Inzaghi might see something in him, so it's good that you can. That's the thing you get from a fresh coach. You get a fresh mindset, fresh outlook on some players, some players that maybe you know Conte didn't rate, even Pinamonti, Club Conte clearly didn't rate. You know, you can get. Some time under Inzaghi and maybe impress him in this preseason. And these are the clubs I was talking about in terms of hoping to snap him up on loan. Udinese, Crotone, Cremonese, in Italy. So Crotone, Cremonese, um, Serie B, I believe. I'm not sure if Cremonese is in Serie B, but obviously Udinese in Serie A. Joined by Saint Etienne and Belgian pair Anderlecht and Bruges. And Bruges apparently are quite heavily interested. Um, that's the one, that's the link that's been hotting up recently in the. Um, Italian uh, news. Um, whilst they appeared that certain, whilst they appeared certain that the twenty-year-old would depart, um, Inzaghi has been thoroughly impressed with Satriano during preseason, which we've seen. You know, they scored that goal against Lugano, two goals today. The former national forward has caught the attention of Inzaghi with his movement and link-up play. And same here, I've been impressed with the not just his physical nature of things. You can see this boy is ready already physically. He's a big boy, big lad, built. But his link-up play looked good. He, you know the way he he presses as well looks good. Um, Inzaghi said to use him in the upcoming friendlies and look at him more closely to whether to sanction a loan move or keep him within the squad. And obviously, as we said, that will depend on Pinamonti and you know the other guys if they leave because there's no point keeping him if he's going to be fifth or sixth choice if you know if we man don't manage to get rid of the guys. But if you know Pinamonti leaves or let's say Alexis Sanchez leaves or someone else you know leaves no Lukaku, no proper Lukaku replacement comes in and he could be kept in as the as the, as that fourth choice. So let's have a look at the poll now once again, see how what you guys are saying now. 15 votes and yeah, still most of you saying keep him as a fourth choice. Uh, which yeah, I'm, I'm more leaning towards the loaning him to a decent level club. So the Bruges, um, maybe not Udinese because I don't know how much playing time really he would get there, but somewhere like even Crotone, who had only just recently been relegated, I know that's Serie B, but still decent level. If they were Crotone are looking to come back up to Serie A, um, when you when you send them to Serie B clubs that are struggling, then you then it's trouble because they it's really hard for players to really blossom there because if you're already struggling in a low quality team in a low quality league. It's hard for the player to, to to flourish, but if you're on a decent quality team in Serie B, you can, um, you know, you can stand out. You know, we've seen in the past uh, in the Euro we were talking about uh, Verratti back in when when he, when he was at Pescara, Insigne when he learned out at Pescara there with the Immobile as well. Um, I think um, what was his name? There was another guy. Um, uh, who was the guy? There was another guy as well at Pescara um, with them. You know these these types of clubs. We've seen many times as a lot of Inter players are loaned out to these Serie B clubs, and you never really hear them after after afterwards. They just kind of disappear into into nothingness. But that just kind of explains what the level is, really, doesn't it? If you can't flourish at that level, then maybe you're just overhyped. So, in my opinion, I'm I'm leaning. I'm going to end the poll now with 15 votes. Thanks to everyone that voted. Um, but yeah, that's really, really where I'm. Uh, I'm leaning towards loaning him out somewhere, because we saw with with Esposito, with Pinamonti in the past. If you're not going to get minutes, there's not there's there's not much. Uh, what what benefit is there of Esposito staying and getting that one, you know, penalty goal that Lukaku gifted to him, that charity penalty goal that Lukaku gifted to him? Was there really any benefit for for Esposito in that year? Um, instead, if he got you know 30 games under his belt somewhere. But then he did go to Venezia, and then he did get minutes, but he didn't really impress. And now he's he's um, he's in Switzerland. And actually, speaking of Esposito, um, before I forget, he actually scored today on his uh, on his debut. Um, did I even save that? Yeah, there it is. There it is. So 
it's supposed to started his first um, game as well for for FC Basel. So good quality team, you know. Obviously, Swiss Swiss league is not high quality league, but in the Swiss league, Basel are you know, if not the best team, one of the best teams. Um, yeah, as it says here on FC Inter News, he scored his first goal, and there's a there's a little clip of it here. Once again, hope I don't get copyrighted. So he's moaning there that he didn't get the ball. If you see, because he the guy messed up, but then wins it back and he's just lurking on the far post. Very easy goal, hits it down. You know, as strikers are supposed to hitting it down into the into the ground as they're taught. So yeah, decent decent goal for um for Esposito, and hopefully he does a, he does well out there. You know, where all Inter fans really become big fans of these 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 young players we always have a little bit more of a you know leaning towards them a bit more passion towards these guys because they've come through the ranks a lot of them you could probably are you know interisti because they've been a lot of them have been there for many many years they probably are you know interisti just like us so we just want to see these guys blossom a lot of them are italian um i don't know it's just one of those things that i think football fans in general do prefer to see a talent from their academy from the system come through and become one of the first team players and one of the stars but with Inter we've not really had that for a long long time we've been starving of um, of real top quality talent you know when's when's the last time someone really truly flourished in Inter's team and you know the last guy you can probably think of is probably Mario Balotelli you know truly a guy that really you know established himself properly in the in the in the first team um and then you know became you know a top player for the national team obviously we know Balotelli's career has fallen off the face of the earth but you know in that in that period I don't you know Santon obviously came through as well at that period but yeah once again him he, he never really worked out so there's 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 we've been starving uh, for for a long time that's why whenever it's an Esposito or an Apina Monti, any any type of flash, we just kind of everyone's kind of flocks like, come on, this is the new guy, he's the wonder kid. But yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult for these guys. Um, and in Italy, the system is not really designed well. You know, when you think about it, there's the Primavera, and then there's nothing in between. You know, in England they have the the youth system, and then they have the reserves league, which is you know under twenty threes, and you know like a variety of the players that maybe don't get into the first team. So there's that midpoint between youth team, you know, proper football, and then there's that reserve league. But in Italy, you, you just have the youth youth team. You go from, you know, skinny 17, 18 years old that you can bully on a weekly basis to, like, men who, like, don't even have let you have a sniff of the ball. So there's no real midpoint for these guys to kind of, you know, come through. And that's why I guess a lot of these guys go to, like, Serie B or Serie C teams. Um, or you can go... An alternate route, which is what Mulatieri did, the striker who last year went to the uh, second um, division in Holland, and he scored 19 goals there. And you know he, he impressed out there, and apparently he's wanted again uh, by them and a few other teams in Serie B. You know sometimes you might have to do something a little bit left field, go to to a foreign league, maybe to a weaker foreign league, um, to get those minutes, to get that experience. Um, yeah, you know, you get, you learn different things as well in, a, in in foreign leagues. You get your your football IQ can increase a little bit more as well. Let's see what you what you guys are saying. Uh, yeah, Cloud Shine has talked about that before. Let him train with Ranocchio for a few months. Yeah, let's give him the the Lukaku treatment as the uh, Conte gave him. You know, the make him train with his back to goal and learn the art of uh, being you know a number nine. That you know that could be that could be an option. Uh, Harry says, if Satriano does go out on loan, I want him to get a decent amount of minutes. Yeah, and that's uh, exactly what I'm saying. That's all about it is like it doesn't matter if he goes to if he goes to Man City or if he goes to you know the you know the Championship or the Serie B. The, the most important thing is is about getting minutes on the on the field at that age. The problem is we loan up players and they hardly get minutes away. Yeah, and that's that, that's the what I was saying with with Agume. You know, we thought last year Agume going to Spezia, maybe he could get some minutes on the Italiano. Maybe you know he's a press aggressive coach, but clearly he didn't trust him. Ricci was the starting player in that position, and apart from you know ten or eleven games, I don't think he really got much time. Agume, um, 
you know, same with the Esposito last year. First, he went to Spal and he couldn't really get any minutes at Spal in Serie B. Then he went to Venezia and he got a few more minutes there, but still wasn't particularly a starter. Maybe here, Basel, you know, he started already the first match today. Um, could be could be the right option, but it's hard. It's hard. The, the, the way you could tackle that, um, that problem of getting minutes is you incentivize the team that you loan them out to with, you know, financial gain for them so you incentivize them by saying and i've seen that i can't remember who did it but there are some there is some cases where this happened where you you let's say let's say we loan out satriano now to crotone and we tell them if he gets 15 starts we give you you know five hundred thousand euros or you know if he gets 30 starts we give you 1 million euros like obviously in inter's position right now that's not really an option but it's something that could be used in terms of to incentivize um the team or you know you give them an option to buy the player at a at a cheaper price and then we have like a buyback option or something but you know just to incentivize them to play because when you think about it you know what incentive is there for like let's say Spezia last year to play a gourmet like they don't have they're not going to make any financial gain from it from playing a 19 year old frenchman um if they feel like rich is better so you have to like kind of give them an incentive for them to to do that really isn't it um it's, it's unless you know agume or these players really manage to impress in training but it seems like you know it's hard it's hard to do that power shine talking about uh costage and demarco yeah man you guys know if you're watching this channel um i'm a big i'm a big fan of costage i've always been a costage a pro costage propaganda on this channel for more than not even just just channel when I used to do the Sempre Inter TV on Sempre Inter's YouTube. Um, I was pushing for Costage even back then. Um, I even prefer Costage to Gosens, which is you know can be could be controversial to some people, but I just feel like he's the perfect technical wing back, and especially in the corner for me, it was going to be perfect. But we'll see. I've seen a few links with Costage, but I'm not sure how how solid those are you know that guy's been putting up crazy numbers for two or three seasons now i don't think i'm gonna go let him go for easy money unless it's a swap so let's see what happens there but yeah costage di marco on the left hand side you got that's an instant upgrade from last year yeah getting more first team football propaganda it's supposed to score yeah we just talked about that <laughs> jesus christ Rangers are leading Real Madrid. Geez, well, you know these pre preseason friendlies. That's uh, you. There's always these some of these crazy results. You know, I think um, Rangers obviously going to start the season before Real Madrid, but I'm sure it looks uh, it's going to look funny. Um, Gerard getting one over Ancelotti early on. Di Marco Chalanolu. Yeah, let's let's get the um, the highlights up on the um, on the channel on the on the, on the video. Let's see what you guys think as well. Gerard in the house. Hello, bro. Sharma, keep it real. Will it supposed to be sold to help us buy a better player next summer? Will he come back? Um, with the supposed to, I think that Basel have a option to buy with us having a buyback option. But honestly, I'm just not seeing that. I'm not seeing that level from Esposito, honestly. I think he's just going to be, hopefully, I hope if he has a good year at Basel, they just buy him and, you know, has like, you know, he can forge himself a career out there. In Switzerland, and then maybe come back to Serie A at a later point. At the moment, I'm not seeing Desposito coming back. I think, um, yeah, I think the we definitely would get that plus Valenza. Harry says, "Oh, we keep five subs permanently, but two of the subs must be youth product. They will help get the youth gain experience." Yeah, that could be a, that could be an interesting, uh, you know, idea to, to propose the the use of youth. Um, yeah let's see could uh it could be uh, i remember italy when when italy were struggling a few years ago there was talk of trying to promote youth like this you know to force teams to have more youth players on their on their roster um yeah young players need minutes man akima i completely agree satriano good but not as much potential as latin and Giroud. <laughs> yeah you know those uh those youth uh you know wonder kids latin and uh, Giroud. Pila Pirola, Satriano Di Marco, and Agume deserve a chance this season. Yeah, I mean, it's always it's always the same case with Inter. We always have a few names at the beginning of the season where we say they deserve a chance, but 
at the end of the day, I always say that like if the coach doesn't think that they deserve a chance, there must be a reason. Maybe we haven't shown enough in training. There's always there's always a reason. There's not that many when you think about it. There's not that many players over the years that I really regret that Inter didn't give a chance to. You know, Zaniolo obviously is the one that stands out from recent years that you know Inter didn't give a chance to. It didn't work out here, and then he exploded at Roma, but also his knees also exploded. But there's not too many players over the years where I'm like, oh man, like I wish we gave this guy a chance. Um, it's a there is there's usually there's a reason and I, I usually trust you know these coaches if they're not willing to give a, a chance you know to these to a lot of these guys um yeah it turns into being linked to pianic yeah that's not gonna happen man pianic's salary have you seen it like yeah ridiculous salary how are we gonna afford that and where he's gonna play like he's gonna be him and him and brozovic like who's gonna start there like nah that's not going to happen. I like Pjanic uh, as a player, even though he's had a pretty steep decline in his career. Um, I thought at one point he was actually the best midfielder in Serie A. But yeah, he's, uh, his downfall has been pretty uh, spectacular over the last year or so. Keita Balde, yeah, we talked about it last couple of videos. I, I'm happy. I'm happy if Keita Balde comes back as long as it's a loan with an option from Monaco, you know, something that's very favorable for Inter, not risky because that guy is also very injury prone. Um, I'm not the biggest Keita Balde fan, but I think in this system, and especially under Inzaghi, as I said, he's had his best ever career, well, sorry, best season of his career under Inzaghi where he scored like 15, 16 goals at Lazio with him. Um, he's still, you know, 26, 27, so he's still in his peak of his career. He's a big Interista. We've seen him even when, you know, Inter played Sampdoria and they gave us that guard of honour. He was like one of the ones clapping the hardest. Like, you know, you can still see this guy really wants to play for Inter. Um, his agent has, you know, tried to, is actually, I think it comes from his camp, the idea of him coming back because they they do want to come back to Inter. But yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't spend any money on Keita Balde though. <clears throat> but yeah. Let me just pull up the highlights from today's match and we can just talk about a little few talking points. As I said, hopefully um, it doesn't get, I don't get copyrighted for, <laughs> for, this, uh, for, this, for these videos. Um, if Di Marco is so involved, like you can see early on, like once again, another great cross Gagliardini should do. But oh yeah, Gagliardini, apparently um, he had to be stretched off um, today. He had to... Um, they had to bring on like a stretcher to take him off the pitch. So hopefully, I mean, we would like to joke about Gagliardini being, you know, <laughs> not that good and stuff like that, you know, brick and uh, cement feet. But yeah, hope he hope he's doing okay. You know, you never, never want to see one of our players being injured. And, you know, especially if it's something serious uh, in preseason as well. I don't want to see that happen. So hopefully Gagliardini is okay. But yeah, you know, Handanovic, look at that. <sighs> I'm, I'm worried going into this season. I keep saying this, you know, people are, a lot of people are fine with Andanovic going into as number one, which is fine. I'm fine with him going as number one. But I hope Inzaghi's happy and willing to give Radu his chance if Andanovic does mess up because um, he doesn't, even in the Lugano game, he gave one of the, the first goal was his fault. I mean, there he did okay. But if you remember in the Lugano, they go, you know, he palmed it straight back onto the striker. And, uh, you know, Satriano doing well there and Darmian scoring one. Uh, Darmian scored two today. Um, Satriano, once again, I think that is nice goal with his left foot. Look, Di Marco, once again, getting involved. Um, Pinamonti missing there. Hakan, lovely little ball over to Di Marco and Hakan combining there. Look at that lovely ball from Hakan. Darmian, man, getting into goal-scoring form already. Love to see it. Di Marco, once again... Get him getting involved, Di Marco and Hakan. Timina Monti getting his goal. I'm liking, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Look at that Gagliardini with the love, with the love goal. The white Pogba. Put some respect in the name. Color of Di Marco once again. Yeah, but I'm going to stop uh, with the highlights because I'm going to get copyrighted, I think, at some point. So, yeah, you guys can obviously watch them on the, uh, on the, on the Inter channel. 
but yeah, you can see DiMarco. DiMarco is getting getting heavy involvement, and he's he's getting. And this time, it looks like he actually played in the left wing back position, not left centre back. It looks like Kolarov played left centre back. Yeah, I'm I'm happy that DiMarco is here, and I'm want him. I want I really want him to get his chance. And I was saying the whole season that Hellas Verona, he was he was uh, performing really well, and he was high up on the list of European in the top five leagues of. Um, key passes you know him Luke Shaw Hakan you know he's got a great great left foot but as someone said and a few people have pointed out with DiMarco the worry is more about him defensively his height you know getting exposed at that back post for, for crosses I'm seeing that Verona as well Hellas Verona last season there was a couple of mid errors that led directly to goals I remember there was a direct error he made at Napoli that led directly to a goal so those kind of defensive lapses or you know concentration lapses are what worries me with DiMarco. But hopefully Inzaghi is able to work um, on him um, on on those types of things. But yeah, the left foot is 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 top notch. Is one of the best um, one of the best in the in the league for sure. Um, and he scored some great goals from outside the box as well last year, which is something that maybe he could be able to add to. To this um to this team and Gerard said only the marco should stay and yeah he's the one really showing why any noticeable differences between contable and limone ball so far good uh good question max uh there was a quick tactical um and this is i noticed this in the lugano match but i've also noticed someone else uh, talking about this so the few i want to say the particular main difference is more in the mentality so from inzaghi so if you know the Lazio team in in general keeps less possession than Inter on average so you know Inter were I think around 53 54% I think Lazio were closer to the 50% mark so they're a little bit happy not to have as much possession and they verticalize a lot more with the ball they're happy um and we've seen this like with Di Marco with Kolarov in the in the preseason friendlies if you've seen they're quite happy to do the the long balls in behind so that's one of the differences I've already seen um, compared to to Conte, who used to, you know, shout at the players if they went long. Uh, it definitely, it was not a preference to go to go long. You had to do the build up and everything to do, you know, the schemes between the players. You know, those those trademark Conte, um, you know, setups. But with Inzaghi, I've seen already, especially when Di Marco's on the ball, he's got he had freedom. Um, probably Kolarov has as well. I didn't get to see the full match today to to try those longer balls, to try riskier passes in between the lines or behind the line. And when Inter are attacking, and let's say, you know, the ball is in midfield, I've heard Inzaghi, and it's been confirmed by a few reporters as well, that, you know, in, in this situation, usually there's a three versus one created. And so you don't need three defenders looking after that one striker, which a lot of teams play with one striker. So Inzaghi has encouraged you know, one of the centre backs to move up when Inter have the ball, and there's no need for to have three guys. So you 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 can move one of these guys higher up. So you know, we saw with Conte the overlapping centre back. Um, with that, that 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 this isn't something new. But with Inzaghi, it seems to be the more of the mentality thing. You know, when we are able to outnumber the opposition, you should do it. You know, if you're able to dominate the ball, if you're able to move up more players where the ball is. Or even up ahead of the ball, um, and Inzaghi said this in his first press conference as well. That you know, he said, "I want attacking football. I want players, to, I like players to express themselves." And that's not really words that Conte used to use. So there's definitely a lot more of an attacking outlook with Inzaghi that I've noticed already. He's talked about it, but you can see it on the pitch as well. The letting these guys uh, will have freedom. But the one thing I want to know, what well, we'll see when we play the the bigger matches, I, I want to see. You know what he does with the with the Hakan role, with you know the Ericsson Hakan role, which was you know the Luis Alberto role. How much freedom does he give? Because we know Conte Conte really didn't give. It wasn't much freedom in this role. It was Ericsson had to come and tuck in almost next to Brozovic at times to be the second regista almost at times. But we seen with uh, Lazio the centre midfielders put up numbers. Milinkovic Savic, Luis Alberto, both used to put up good assist and goal numbers. Whereas with Inter, it was only really Barella who was given that. Oh, he, he was the one that, you know, was the higher up of the of the midfielder. So let's see um, how how those things develop. 
Um, but apart from that, the same, uh, you can see a lot of the same schemes that you would see with the Conte team. A lot of those first time balls that, you know, the right center back will play it to the wing back and he'll do a first time ball straight to the striker. The Satriano, Pinamonti both, you know, come a little bit deeper to receive it and then they they pass it off straight onto this guy or straight onto that guy. So a lot of those, you know, memorized moves, I don't think, I think it makes sense for Inzaghi to keep those memorized moves uh, that, you know, these guys have been playing for for two seasons with. But I'm interested to see the new schemes and the automatisms that um, Inzaghi brings. But it's still very early days. There's still not that much uh, to talk about at the moment, I'm sure. When everyone comes back, then we can start really, really talking about, you know, what's, uh, what's going on. Inter bad at managing young talents, Indra says. What about Simone's track record? <laughs> no, man. Inzaghi's track record is not good. I was talking about it on the Culture Connection pod um, the um, the other day when I was on with Jerry and uh, Alex Dono. You know, they were hyping up Sari, and I was telling them, okay, Sari is not a big youth guy either, but neither, and in, Jerry confirmed, you know, Inzaghi wasn't either. But at the same time, who did Lazio have to bring through? Like you can say, oh, you didn't bring any youth through, but apart from Raul Moro, you know, Lazio's youth team actually got relegated last season. So that shows you that you know the quality of Lazio's mid Primavera in the last you know last season or so hasn't been that good. Um, but yeah, Injagi's track record isn't that great. But I don't. I don't know, you know, Conte's track record isn't that great as well, but when there is someone that like, like a Bastoni, like when there is a ready-made talent, like when someone is good enough, I feel like these guys would play him. So like with Di Marco, you know, you can see now he's had his year or two of experience. I think now he is ready to play. I think Inzaghi will trust Di Marco. It's just, you know, as I say, a lot us as fans, we love the idea, the concept of giving these youth a chance and, you know, especially over the a likes of a color of you know we bring in this guy and he messes up in the derby and you know we already didn't like him when he came in so you think like oh why not give like pirola a chance or someone like that but imagine if pirola makes that mistake imagine if it's pirola who gives away the two penalties in the uh, ac against ac milan in that derby like you've burnt out a youth player at the beginning of his career like he's he's gonna struggle to recover from that for forever like if he if he makes something like that whereas with these experienced players they can take the abuse you know color has been taking the abuse for the past year and now he's re renewed his contract half his wages it's just you know water on his back he doesn't care like he just goes on you know, mentality he goes on to the next one but with these youth guys if you make a mistake you know the san siro gets on your back obviously the, the crowd is not there but if you know if you lose the trust of the coach or you start doubting yourself it's a, it's a slippery slope so there's a reason why these, I mean, these guys have played football in Zaghi, Conte, you know, these guys have played football. They were youth players at one point. I'm sure they don't do this on purpose. If they feel like someone is good enough, I feel like they would they would give him a chance. Um, in Zaghi, I think he's pretty much married to the 3-5-2. Um, I believe in the in the first few seasons, which is the one I was talking about with Keita Balde, had his best season of his career. He was playing like more of a 4-2-3-1. But then um, for the past three seasons, it's been straight, 3-5-2, straight up. Um, I think sometimes he's played like a 3-4-1-2 with Luis Alberto behind the strikers. But he's been, yeah, like from what I heard from Lazio fans, he's pretty married to the 3-5-2, like 3-5-2 or death, similar to uh, Antonio Conte. So don't get your hopes up about seeing a, a variety of formations or different types of formations. Sorry, guys. Gerard asks if Brozo does not return, we'll need a new CDM. So I think we should sell him for about 34 mil, buy a pianist for free and it's a 40 mil. Hey man, that sounds like FIFA talk. Like Brozovic. I said, yeah, it makes sense to sell Brozovic because he's crossed his orbit, he's been all absorbed. So he if we sell him, it's been it's fully it's all plus valenza, but how you get, like yeah you say we get pianos for free but is that really the case like Barca spend like 60 million for him I think they'll probably let him go on a loan where you know they'll have to contribute for his wages or something like that I'm not sure um and then pianos yeah if you buy him on the free like the wages will be absolutely crazy we don't have 20 million for Henderson like 
yeah, I just don't see that happening, man. I just don't see that happening. Someone has to come in with Alfa Brozovic first, and um, he didn't have a great Euros. And I think he was. If I if I had to make a, a a flop eleven of the Euros, I would probably put Brozovic as the CDM of that <laughs> flop eleven. So he didn't do himself any favors in that in that in in these Euros. And the go is injured. Yeah, Gagliardini injury. As I said, hopefully not too serious. To fair, it's not easy to challenge the title while producing talent to the first team. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, Milan last year had a you know a team that was very young, average, but not many of those players were actually from their primavera. You know, those a lot of those talents were bought. So, how like what team can you like mention me a team in the Serie A who's 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 challenged for the title with primavera? Like, I can't think of any. Like you could. Atalanta, their talent, you know, they buy from all over the place, but it's not, you know, it always just sounds good in theory, but it's 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 not very applicable practically. Radu ahead of hand. Yeah, I'm not even advocating that. I don't know, I don't know if if Radu is good enough, but I'm just saying that, you know, we're seeing these mistakes creeping in Andanovic's game. And with Conte last year, I don't know whether it was him just not rating Radu or because of the fact that. Handanovic is the captain, so the fact that he's unmovable. But I feel like, hopefully, with Inzaghi, if you saw with Inzaghi, he was happy with dropping Strakosha and putting in Pepperino, or dropping Pepperino and putting Strakosha back in. It wasn't so, you know, solidified in the uh, Inzaghi in the uh, Lazio team who the number one keeper was, which you could say is not a good thing. But I feel like with every position, and we, I was saying that last year, even with Hakimi had his form drop off. I said, you know, put in Darmian, let Hakimi, you know, sit on the bench for two or three games, and then you know, the, everyone. I think even Lukaku, maybe like, uh, maybe not, but someone like every single player shouldn't have their spot guaranteed in this team. Everyone should be, you know, challenged for their for their spot. That's what I'm saying. And we'll find out if Radu's good enough. You know, we don't, we won't know if Radu's good enough. He only plays, you know, the matches at the end of the season so yeah in my opinion he's not the long-term answer radu but he might prove me wrong and i'll be happy i'll be really happy if radu proves me wrong and needs to check his eyes eyesight yeah needs to send him to spec savers yeah that's what i mean he just looks shaky even in these pre pre-season matches <laughs> yeah ricardo ishamo was he prefer right wing but nandes dumfries bellerin or someone else as I said in the last few videos, I'm growing on the Nandes train. I, I, I want, I like, unlike Nandes in general, I want him at Inter, but I wasn't sure whether I want him as the, you know, the Hakimi replacement. But when I think about it, the guys played most of the last season as right wing back. He played for for the in the Copa America for Uruguay as a way at right back. So mentally, he must have made the switch now to to that position. He must feel that maybe that is his best position now. I like I like you know what he offers as well in terms of tenacity, tackling. So defensively, I'm happy with him, especially compared to like a Bayerin. If he comes in, who would have to adapt and things like that. Pace as well. He's a little, he's he's short, but he's got a good pace on him. He's got good energy. Got good crossing. Good one v one ability. He's he's the full package. I think he's just ready. He was ready to slot in, and he also can play that centre mid role, which I think is his best position in my opinion. Anyway, that vice Barella, I think he would be. Bayerin, as I said, loan with option. I'm okay with that because then it's like low risk. If Indogi can work on him, he's he's very quick, you know, especially before his ACL. That guy was super quick. Dumfries, <laughs> I keep saying everyone was like hyping about Dumfries at the Euros, but I wasn't I wasn't that convinced. But he's a beast physically, he's got good pace. Um, he's got a goal threat as well. We saw with the Holland, he was getting in, into the box like Hakimi did for Inter. Like he looked like he was uh, the added striker for Holland that many times. So I wouldn't be against Dumfries either. I'm just saying, like I wasn't that impressed by him. But the fact is, we just have to. Um, as I've said, like we know we're downgrading for Hakimi. That, that's that, that's the, that's a fact. But we just have to find a way that this downgrade isn't too big. So. With Nandes, you get someone that's proven already in the Serie A, so it wouldn't be too much of an adaptation period. He can, you know, be adaptable to different positions. But then, yeah, if it's going to be too expensive, then I'd rather not. Dumfries is the same problem. 
PSV won 15 million. They, I don't think they're going to do loan with obligation or loan with the option to buy. You know, these Dutch clubs, they don't work like that. They want straight up money. Mino Raiola is his agent. You don't want too many Mino clients on your books. We've got Pinamonti, who's a Mino client, who's somehow earning 1.5, 2 million thanks to Mino. So I don't know how he managed to do that, but that's what Mino does for you when you're his agent and gets you top money even though you haven't achieved anything. Um, and then we got De Vrij. De Vrij is a Mino, Mino guy. So if you get a third guy in the from the Mino camp, it gets a bit tricky because then Mino starts to get a little bit too much power within your team. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, Nandes is, is is become my favorite choice uh, for right wing back, honestly speaking. I think Radu and DiMarco have a highest chance of replacing Handa and Perisic. I trust and believe in them all. Yeah, I think DiMarco definitely... Uh, I'm not sure about Radu, as I keep saying. Yeah, Indro agrees in terms of this tactics and the Simone midfield a bit more freedom. Wing backs um, mostly stay wide, start from deep and attack space. Yeah. Um, should Inter give the drip load another chance? Uh, Lazaro. Yeah, that's one guy we always forget. Like, even when I talk about these news, I always forget about Lazaro, even though he's there. But I think, as I said, I just think it's time to cut the. It just didn't work out for the guy. He wants to stay, but he might have to if we don't manage to get Nandes or anyone else. He might just have to be the you know the 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 cheap choice because he's already there. You might as well try to make use of him. But he just hasn't proved proven anything. Even when he was been away at Inter, Newcastle, at Hertha Berlin. Um, oh no, sorry, not Hertha Berlin. When he was at Munchen Gladbach last year, he just didn't seem to due to injuries or, you know, form, whatever. He just didn't seem to nail down the place there either. So, yeah, it's difficult. It's not, but it's difficult to sell him as well. Hey, we've got Anthony Privatera in the house as well, into Worldwide Gang. With our back three, I think DeMarco will be better defensively. Yeah, we'll see. Obviously, having a better defensive trio at the back behind you obviously also helps. Um, can, can Chiellini succeed with us? What do you mean? Now, uh, Chiellini signing a new contract with uh, with Juve. I don't I don't think uh, Chiellini is uh, going to come <laughs> going to come to Inter. I'm afraid that Inter will concede more goals under Inzaghi than Conte because of its attacking preferences. Yes, I agree with that. I think you, we have to be comfortable with that and accept that whatever number of goals we conceded the last two seasons, I think we're going to concede more goals this season under Inzaghi because we're going to our yeah, we're going to be a little bit more open. He's he's happy to... He's going to be like, you know, Inter at the beginning of last season when we were a little bit too open. But I think Inzaghi will find a good balance in between that. But it won't be the balance that Conte found in the second half of the season where it was, you know, that almost terrorist football of, you know, sitting back against the, the big teams, especially, and counter-attacking. Um, but I think it is going to be a little bit more open. Um, a few more... News I wanted to cover. Um, Lukaku, Big Rom, is on his way back. We've seen him. Hey, you guys must have seen him. If you follow him on Instagram, this guy has been on holiday. Um, was it Turks and Caicos or somewhere? Somewhere in the Caribbean, I think he was. Um, and Miami. I think he split his time between Miami and somewhere in the Caribbean. It looked really good. But this guy has still been putting in work in his holidays. He's been looking in peak shape. Um, and yeah, today... He put up a story. He's back in Milano. Hey, Milano. So he's back. And tomorrow, I think he's supposed to be back in training with the team. And um, yeah, Inzaghi has uh, has his guy. Inzaghi has spoken to him on the phone already before. You know, he even took a coaching session at Inter. He, Lukaku confirmed that he spoke with Inzaghi a few times, actually, which is great news. You know, Inzaghi's convinced him about the project, about his ideas. Um, and I'm excited to see what Inzaghi does with him. So looking forward to seeing pictures of Lukaku back in training and seeing him in action. Um, as always with Lukaku, you you need to give him some slack in the first few weeks because of his physique, the size of him. He takes him a little bit longer to get in, you know, peak condition. So let's hold back on the jokes. If you see him in, pre, in one of the preseason friendlies, looking a bit heavy, looking a bit slow, sluggish. It's just these guys, the likes of him. Gagliardini, Scrinia, you know, these bigger body shapes, they take a little bit longer to, to get into the rhythm. But yeah, once Lukaku will get going, it will be scary. And I hope he, uh, he can keep that MVP type form. 
coming into next season as well. Um, next news is relating to Lukaku as well. Beppe Marotta spoke today before the friendly. It says Romelu Lukaku is not for sale. So you guys can sleep at ease. You can, you know, sleep easy. No Hakimi business here. Lukaku is staying. Um, from our side, we can absolutely say yes, Lukaku is not for sale. He's an important piece of the chessboard available to Inzaghi. Grazie, Beppe. Speaking of people coming back to training, Arturo Vidal also posted he's on his way back to Milan. Uh, some of you are probably not as happy to hear about that as with the, as with Lukaku, but yeah, Vidal is, um, is an interesting one because obviously like similar to like Nangolan and other ones, you know, he's on a high, high wage, 6.5 million net is a crazy wage when you think about it. Thank you, Antonio Conte. Um, Six million net, as it says here, up until 2022. But Inter are going to probably do what they're trying to do with Nangolan, which is cancel his contract or, you know, let him go as a free agent. But the issue with that is you need a club that takes him on because otherwise you're going to have to pay a hefty fee to 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 Vidal, you know, to cancel the contract. Um, so there's rumors of Boca Juniors being interested, some Brazilian clubs interested, but they have to offer some good wage to to Vidal for him to be happy to go. So you know, somewhere around the two to three million net mark they have to offer, because then at least Inter can give him, you know, the one one million or two million to to part ways, and then he can go on his way. But otherwise, he, you know, as he says, he's going um, a casa. So Arturo Vidal is calling Milan home. So, And his uh, agent, I think, said that Vidal was looking to stay at Inter as well. So it's going to be hard. The Arturo Vidal, um, you know, I've always, you know, people make fun of me. I am a big Arturo Vidal fan, but it makes sense, I think, for all parties for, to part ways. He's, he was Antonio Conte guy. I don't really see Inzaghi kind of, you know, utilizing him properly um yeah that wage is just too much now in this in this uh, in this market so i hope vidal is able to accept a lower salary somewhere else i'm happy that he was at my club for a year that i got to see vidal play for my club and then he scored that goal against juve but as claude would say from arsenal fan tv rest in peace it's time to go so yeah hope uh hope he goes um, the other guys as well, so speaking of guys coming back, Perisic is supposed to come back tomorrow. So Vidal, Lukaku, Perisic. Um, Perisic had an extra week off, I believe, because um, because of his COVID case. So, yeah, he had a little bit extra time off, quite rightly. And then um, Matias Vecino. Matias Vecino is also coming back um, tomorrow. So the South Americans and Lautaro. Um, Bastoni Barella will be coming at the beginning of next month because obviously they deserve that that longer break because they played for a longer time. Um, so yeah, so looking back to the team coming back in full mode, Inzaghi getting all his chess pieces, and then he can start really working on the the tactics, set pieces, you know, everything, and then then we'll start to see. Then we can actually look at the those preseason friendly and start to pick out, you know differences between Inzaghi's Inter and Antonio Conte's Inter that's when uh, that's when we can start really really looking into it um did you get the dollar sign Inter fan token no I don't think it's been released yet but I probably will I probably will dabble into it um and actually keep an eye out from my channel um there will be some video with someone explaining the whole socios token cryptocurrency thing like someone that will actually explain it properly and everything over the next week or so so keep an eye out um for that um what else we got what else we got uh anthony Priv, we got nandez vice lukaku and i'm ready for next season ronaldo decision day was more of a decision week or rivals are moving if beppe can tidy up a little bit more i think it's a win hey anthony bringing through bringing through that positivity i like it i like it yeah, i'm positive about next season yeah if you give me nandes if you give me a proper vice lukaku okay Giroud is gone but yeah if you give me you know what they're talking about you know someone someone of the likes of a petania or you give me or even if it's if satriano or if you give me even keita balde you know 
you still are, it's still an upgrade from Pinamonti. And then, you know, Di Marco and Perisic, I think that to me is already an upgrade between, you know, Young and Perisic. Hakan, if we're going from Ericsson to Hakan, yeah, maybe that's a slight downgrade, but let's not forget Ericsson for the first six months was pretty much not there. But if you can get Hakan firing from the first part of the season, that's you could say that's an upgrade already because, you know, Ericsson was a massive part in the second half of the season, but if you can get Hakan to perform all the way, all throughout the whole year, you could say that's a, you know, in general, an upgrade. Um, so the squad pieces are there, guys. Obviously, losing Hakimi is a, is a big is a big loss, but you know, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. And that Ronaldo's decision day, I think that that Instagram post, it was like he was standing next to his Rolls Royce. He probably was deciding which car to take that day, whether it's the Bugatti Veyron the Rolls Royce or the, you know, the McLaren or something like that's probably what decision he was talking about, man. That guy, he's not going anywhere. No one's going to pay him the, the 30 million net salary that he's getting at Juve. Um, yeah. So Juve is stuck with him. He's not going anywhere. Hey, my guy in the house, stop the Dumfries hype. <laughs> there's a reason only inter interested in him. Now I think there's a few more int teams interested in him. Um, but yeah, I'm not on the on the Dumfries hype for sure. Right wing back and vice Lukaku plus clear the dead wood. Yeah, that's the most important part. This this summer is the is the is the year because we say it every year, but it's the year that you get rid of this dead wood because that's when you get rid of these useless salaries and then at least moving forward you can start to build a new squad because we we're held back by a lot of these players like Nangolan. His high wage just holds us back. Um, Dal Bert's coming back every year, holds us back. Jao Mario, who's finally gone, he always holds us back. So this could be the year where we finally get managed to get rid of this dead wood and we can start, start finally, you know, putting in more pieces into the puzzle that are actually useful to the cause. Lazaro quite unlucky every piece he's always gets injured. Yeah, even this year he got COVID, but I think he's back in training now. But But that's also you know, an issue that maybe he's not taking care of himself properly or, you know, his lifestyle outside of the training, maybe he's not quite right that he's always getting these injuries. Any new info on this? Yeah, as I speak, briefly talked about it, about Vidal. Um, it's going to be hard with Vidal, as I said, his salary is just so high. These South American clubs would take him for sure, but can they offer him the salary that he wants? It's difficult. Vecino, I've not really heard too much with Vecino. But there were some grumblings today that Diego Demme, um, the Napoli midfielder, has got like a medium injury today. So like a slightly serious injury that will keep him out for two or three months. And Spalletti is at Napoli now. And even when Gattuso was there, Vecino was linked with, with Napoli. But now that Spalletti is there, you can see the link even more because, you know, Spalletti is the guy who signed the Vecino for Inter. And, you know, he was a Spalletti guy. And there's rumors of uh, you know more interest from Napoli for for Vecino. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, you never know. I think Vecino would be one of those moves that would end end up happening towards the end of the the see the um, window. But I think Vecino, as I always say, I think he has very unique characteristics in the inter midfield, and I think Inzaghi will like him because we don't have the Milinkovic Savage type midfielder in our squad, and he's I'm not saying that he's similar, but in terms of um, Inzaghi used to play a lot of long balls to Milinkovic Savic and Mil Savic would get into the box because of his aerial threat which is something that Vecino adds uh, with his box-to-box -box ability so I think Inzaghi would appreciate that in the inter-squad and no one really has that in this inter-squad so we'll see as I've always said I'm always I'm always more keen to keep Vecino over Gagliardini so I hope there's Gagliardini offers that come through <clears throat> yeah Radu, man, I just hope he gets his chance if um, if um, Handa messes up. It makes me sad people not seeing Radu as potential Handa replacement. But yeah, that's the thing, though, guys. I don't know. I don't know, Hamad. Did you watch Genoa play when Radu was there? Like, I tuned into a few matches. He was he's a good shot stopper in terms of reflexes and stuff. But and he looks good with the ball at his feet as well. Very technical. But we have to see. Like to judge, we have to see. But. This, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to give him a chance, but I just personally, I feel like he's not the long-term answer, but he could be. And I'm saying, like, I'm happy if he proves me wrong, but I just don't, I just don't think he is. <laughs> Gagliardini is never in rhythm. 
is that Bob still asking for two million? Yes, Roger is still asking for for two million. Yeah, so Inter is still offering the one point two. Roger still asking for the two. I know, I know. It's like it's, it's standard procedure when you, as we said with the Vidal, he, the Inter to cancel a contract, you have to offer a um, an exit fee. It's normal procedure, but it's just with Raja. It seems just like you know you've not like what have you done for Inter from you know that one season on Spalletti? If you really want to go to Cagliari, where your family is, where you want to be, just accept you know less wages, less exit fee, and just go. But fair play to him. He wants to get his wants to get his bag. Vidal was a huge disappointment. Um, overall, yes, you could say so, but. He cost one million. I think he was just worth it, just for that goal against uh, against Juve. For me, in my personal opinion, and for what he offered outside of, you know, what we don't see on the pitch in the training and like other things. Like I'm sure, him, Kolarov. You know, I've read numerous articles where they've talked about that these experienced guys actually did add, add something, and you know that's why Conte wants to sign them. But yeah, overall on the pitch. I'll admit, even as a Vidal fan, he was a little bit of a disappointment. <clears throat> Just joined, but I hope we let's stop letting Kyrie bully us. Yeah, man, these guys need to give us a favor finally, man. It's always just one, one way. <laughs> Bros are coming to Uncle Shama Channel explaining his crypto. Hey, to the moon, to the moon. You never know. You never know. Yeah, Skamaka as well. Skamaka, Felipe Caicedo, those are good options for for Vice, um, Vice Lukaku. Najib, welcome to the channel. First time commenting. Love DiMarco today. Yeah, seeing a lot of love, quite rightly, for DiMarco. He seems very heavily involved. And with that left foot, why not? You know, um, you know, last year, if you notice, everything was down the right-hand side because of the Barella-Hakimi kind of partnership. But this year, it could be it could be switched over to the left-hand side because of the DiMarco and Hakan, you know, both very technical players. You know, if we have like someone like Darmian, you know, you know, all love to Darmian, but he's not as technical as you know Hakimi or um, Di Marco. So you could see, I could see the flip happening where you know the the the, the build up goes over to the left hand side, especially with Bastoni as well having the Bastoni, Di Marco, Hakan, very technical left hand side of the of the pitch. We don't need a right wing back sub. It just, um, yeah, I, I disagree with that. I think Darmian did amazing last year, above my expectations. But that's Antonio Conte. This is that's that's the magic of Antonio Conte. I call him the the wing back whisperer. Marco Alonso, you know, Darmian when he was in Italy, De Ciglio when he played for Italy, Candreva when he played for Italy, Candreva when he played for, for Inter. Ashley Young when he came to Inter, Perisic converting to left wing back, Darmian last season, Hakimi coming in and you know doing amazing in his first season. This guy just knows how to get the best out of his wingers. Lichtsteiner, Evra, Ayuve, Sturaro, like just random guys, Paduin, Giaccherini. Like this guy is just the, the wing back whisperer. He just knows how to get the best out of these. Like Darmian's last season was his best ever season if unless apart from his last season at Torino which was the reason why Man United signed him that was the best ever Darmian season and like when you look at it with Darmian like he's what does he actually offer like on the ball he's very average he's not very quick he's, he, have you ever seen him beat anyone 1v1 I don't even remember seeing Darmian <laughs> ever dribbling past anyone his crossing is decent like when he gets in a corner position it's pretty decent but it's not like you know great whippage like he's quite accurate with his crosses but it's nothing you know techie he's good at getting into the box we saw last year he's good at his timing into the, the runs his finishing is surprisingly good but as a starting right wing back for the scudetto winning team no and once again he might prove me wrong next season like he proved me like i wasn't one of the doubters last season for darman i was like give antonio this is why i was saying it. give antonio con to whoever he wants victor moses that's another one even when Victor Moses came, I was like, "Give with Antonio Conte, you can give him anyone, and I'm happy with at the wing back position. Um, even if you gave my con to 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 Conte, I'll be like, "Come on, let's bring him back. I'm sure Conte and Pintus can do something." 
But now without Conte, I feel like some of these guys that were going over and above their ability level, will they come back down? That's my that's my fear with Inzaghi. Is he is he a talent maximizer? Like Conte is a talent maximizer with his those memorized moves. He takes the thinking out for, for these players. Like a lot of these players don't have to do the thinking. You just have to follow the pattern of play and you get into those positions. That's that's the Conte way of playing. You it doesn't matter who's playing in that in that in that slot, as long as you follow those instructions, that pattern of play, it will work. And that's why every single team, every Antonio Conte team plays in the exact same way. You see the exact same patterns of play. Within Zaghi, there will be more freedom. The players will have to make more decisions upon themselves. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure with the Darmian. And I've seen a few people say that D'Ambrosio as well. I don't want to see D'Ambrosio as the right wing back, um, start any right wing back game at all. Um, you know, he's lost a yard or two of pace over the last few years. He does his best work defensively for sure. He does his best work, you know, definitely when he's in the opposition box, when it's a set piece and all that kind of stuff. But as a right wing back, you need that energy, you need some zip, you need some pace, you need some 1v1 ability. And D'Ambrosio just doesn't have that anymore. So we definitely do. I disagree with that. We definitely do need someone at right wing back. And Nandes, Bayerin, Dumfries, they, are, they all add those things athletically, technically, age-wise. We definitely need someone there. I disagree, Smiley. If Vidal accepts a salary cut like Kolarov, would you be happy as staying him for staying? <laughs> I, no. Because under Inzaghi, I don't know. I just don't think, I don't, don't see him being an Inzaghi type of player. Like when I think about the players that Inzaghi had at Lazio, I don't see where Vidal fits in. Like, I just don't see it. I just, I just feel like the best for for Vidal and Inter will be to 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 split split. You know, my hometown club want to sign Raja for free. Who's that? <laughs> Maybe Marotta can call to here so Raja can send. Yeah, that might be the option. Send Raja to some rich Indonesian team somewhere, and uh, he can earn his uh, Indonesian his Bahasa money. Cloud Shine agrees with me about keeping Vecino. Oh, Jovic. Yeah, that's an interesting rumor that pro cropped up the last couple of days. Luka Jovic. I've always maintained, um, and this was when, um, it might have been when Real Madrid signed him, or even after that. To me, Luka Jovic is like the closest, characteristics-wise, is very similar to Lautaro to me. But he could also work as the you know vice Lukaku. Um, and yeah, like there, if, if there's favorable terms, Real Madrid obviously didn't. It hasn't worked out. They're looking to get rid of him. If there is a loan or a two-year loan with the option to buy something like that, you, that you can do like they did with Brahim Diaz. That could be a great option. And I think, yeah, especially in the Conte, I think Jovic would have been perfect. Like that guy is stacked. Not <laughs> sell a kidney for Morata to monitor Jovic's your situation. Yeah, man, that would be. As I said, that would be sick. I hope we're keeping an eye on it. I hope Morata's keeping one of his eyes on it. Alex Tejas, yeah, we talked about it, but I think left wing back's not really a priority now. I think DeMarco's back, Perisic is back. Unless Perisic goes, I don't think the left wing back situation is a priority. If Perisic goes, then definitely Tejas should be looked at, but I'm happy with DeMarco and Perisic as the two left wing back options. Yeah, I spoke on Dumfries already. I, I didn't really buy into the Euros hype. But physically, he's a beast. So I wouldn't be against it. But as I said, I'm not really sure about the Mino Rayo La Factor. And they want 50 million cash. So I don't see that happening. I was doing a Spezia career mode, but Coman intro almost won the treble. <laughs> Darmian is a solid bench player. There's no chance he can be our starting right wing. But yeah, that's what I, that's what I think. You know, great. Great. Um, option to have did great last year but let's not overhype him just because of last year who's having the best market so far in the top seven i'm not really sure actually no one's really done much have they um yeah like milan a lot of their players they bought is just the options that they had to buy from the current players and then they bought Giroud. um you have done nothing 
Well, the I don't I've seen Napoli do much. Atalanta, you know, they're still yeah. No one's really done much. That's the thing. That's what the thing that keeps me quite positive for next season. Like, no one's really improved yet, anyway. And I don't see, you know, I don't see unless you sign Locatelli, that would be a big buy. But I don't really see much improvement going on. So that's what keeps me quite confident going into next season. And you know, the fact that. Inzaghi made Chiro Mobile, as uh, Samir says here. Let's see what he can do with Lukaku. Let 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 Limone cook, man. Yeah, Dalo, but I think... Um, is it, are Milan taking them back? Um, but yeah, Dalo could be an interesting option as well um, on a loan. But again, yeah, defensively, there was some worries. That was a lot of the reason why Pioli wasn't starting them over Calabria. But as a wing back, right wing back, it could work out, and he's got the the Serie A experience. Shama didn't rate Milan Mercato so far. So surprised. Yeah, I mean, the, what have they done? Like they've just bought the players that they had last year, and Giroud, and gave out their best keeper, uh, their generational keeper for free, and Hakan for free. So there's a lot of you know unknowns for them at the moment. Yeah, man, it is a big diamond we lost, but it is what it is. But yeah, guys, when for an hour, uh, six minutes or an hour, six minutes, 48 people. Wow, you guys, uh, you guys are doing uh, doing me well. Make sure, guys, before you leave, as I always say, it helps with the algorithm, with the YouTube algorithm to push the channel. We're at 2000. Make sure you leave a thumbs up before you leave. I hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, this session today, this stream, keeping you up to date with the latest Inter news. Let's see what happens with Nandez. It's going to be annoying. Every stream I'm going to do, I think I'm going to be talking about Nandes for a while. My prediction is this is going to be done mid-August to the end of August, the Nandes thing. And then if it isn't done, I think Inter are going to go to Bayerin and going to secure that loan with the option from Arsenal because they're going to they're going to have to accept that kind of deal towards the end of the market. That's my prediction. But let's see. Let's see, guys. Um, yeah, enjoyed talking with you guys as always. Um, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe um, and leave a thumbs up. And yeah, don't worry, guys. We'll be keeping you guys up to date with all the ongoings at Inter in the, in the coming days and the coming weeks. So keep an eye on the channel. Keep an eye out for the videos I'm doing relating to socios, to the fan token stuff in the coming week as well to explain how the whole thing works. Um, and yeah, guys, as always, Forza Inter. And uh, yeah, love you all.